Hello, my name is Dr. Hart Pinto and this is lecture three in our mini-series and the topic is appendicitis. Patients with appendicitis are the main cause of emergency abdominal surgeries and are responsible for up to 80,000 patients admissions in the United Kingdom. It typically affects any age but there are peaks within both the teenage years and in the early 20s. So how does appendicitis develop? So first of all we have an obstruction of the appendiceal lumen. The appendix becomes then inflamed. It fills with mucus and pus. The mucosa becomes edematous and it disrupts the vascular and lymphatic drainage which causes the tissues to infarct. Bacteria then infiltrate the infarcted appendix wall and this leads to the perforation of the appendix which subsequently leads to peritonism. Patients with appendicitis typically present with fever, anorexia and some form of change in bowel habit. Classically they present with central abdominal pain and as the symptoms progress it gradually localises to the right iliac fossa. The pain is often described to increase with any increase in intra-abdominal pressure which can be worse therefore on moving coughing or sneezing. A classical thing that patients may complain of is that they may feel every bump in the ambulance on the way to the accident and emergency department. On clinical examination we will find the patient is often pyrexial, tachycardic as they may develop a SERS response, they will be most tender in the right iliac fossa and peritonism on examination will be a suggestion of perforation. The psoas stretch test, whether you have passive extension or hyperextension of the lower limbs, which increases abdominal pressure, also is indicative of appendicitis. Rossing sign, where you palpate the left iliac fossa and it causes tenderness in the right iliac fossa, is also a diagnostic sign. You may also find that patients complain of pain more when you release the pressure from the right iliac fossa whilst palpating is also a fairly diagnostic sign of appendicitis. In these patients we want to make sure that we've got good IV access. If they're tachycardic or hypotensive or have a SERS response we want to give a stat dose of IV crystalloid up to one litre and we want to make sure that we've sent appropriate bloods including full blood count, UNEs, LFT and amylase to rule out pancreatitis, a CRP and a group in save in preparation for theatre. Ideally we would also wish to catheterise the patient so that we have accurate recordings of input and output of fluids especially if they are septic or hypotensive. Patients should also be made nil by mouth so that they can be prepared to go to theatre should they need to. Investigation wise we usually say that appendicitis is diagnosed clinically but ultrasound scans can be useful in order to rule out ovarian pathology in females. For those patients who have a fairly ambiguous presentation CT abdomens may be indicated. Amongst patients who are too unwell to undergo their CT abdomen, either they are hemodynamically unstable or we do not wish to expose them to a great deal of ionising radiation, a diagnostic laparoscopy will able to provide us with a diagnosis whilst also providing a route for which we can remove the inflamed appendix. The Alvadra scoring system is a useful test which is able to help us differentiate appendicitis from other pathologies. The scoring system takes into account both signs, symptoms and also laboratory values and extrapolating from this creates a numeratic score from which we can determine the likelihood of appendicitis being present in that patient. A score greater than 5 suggests that appendicitis is likely to be compatible with the diagnosis and a score greater than 9 means that appendicitis is very probable i.e. it is likely to be the main cause of the problem. So management wise of course we've already discussed 
We want to make sure that the patient has adequate IV fluids and in clear observation of their urine output. Patients should be placed on broad spectrum antibiotics if there is any signs of sepsis, such as kefiroxamine and metronidazole or tazacin. Definitive management is through surgical intervention in the form of an appendicectomy. This can either be open or laparoscopic depending on the surgeon's preference and the patient and their ASA grade or body habitus. And occasionally following CT scan we find that they have an abscess next to the appendix. Sometimes this may be appropriate for percutaneous drainage which can be inserted by an interventional radiologist under guidance. Thank you for listening. I hope this has helped you with your revision for your upcoming exams. And as always, subscribe and like our videos if you wish to see more of them. And if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions for future lectures, please leave them in the comments section below.